Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Music Theory Tuition series where I work with you step by step through the ABRSM Discovering Music Theory grades. I'll work through every single exercise and explain everything you need to know. You can access information about the books I have available to help you on my website. Go to SharonBill.com. For advert free and longer lessons, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill. If you can give me a like, that would be super. And please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated. You can support this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Sharon Bill. Let's move on to page 58 of the Grade 5 Discovering Music Theory Workbook. We're moving on to exercise 9 where we get the opportunity to describe chords but now they're in the setting of a melody. However, it doesn't change anything at all. It's exactly as we've done every step so far. And we're now just describing a chord within the context of a piece of music and we need to describe it fully. We need to choose which chord the note is, which degree of the scale it's built upon, and then we also need to make sure we've ticked the correct option to show us which position the chord is in. And so we follow exactly the same procedures as before. We've got to choose which key it is, and actually they've done that for us here in the first couple. However, we're then going to have to choose it for ourselves. We've had lots of discussions about that, and so we'll soon find out that it's easy to spot the key. And also, if you do find that your chords aren't making sense, then chances are it's because you've got the wrong key and it should be the relative major or minor. So it won't take you long to realise that something's amiss if it is that you started off with the wrong key. So here we're in the key of E major. We've got this little melody here. We have our four part harmony or sometimes three parts. And the principle remains exactly the same, so let's just map out what we need to know. We're in E major, we know that because we have a key signature of four sharps and nothing else in the melody tells us that we're in a minor key. There's no accidentals to tell us otherwise. And so we are looking for options between chords one, two, four and five. The root note is E. Then stepping up is F, we miss G because we're not doing chord three. Then we have A and B. Building our triads, E, G, B, one, three, five. F, A, C, A, C, E, B, D, F. And of course, if you find that difficult, you can always just sketch out a piano keyboard. One, two, three, four, five. And just visualize it that way. You could just even write the letters. Because I do realise it does kind of cycle round, so E, F, G, A, B, C can be a bit confusing when you're just holding it in your head. So you could always just step those out to help you. However, there we go, that's our triads. And then we just need to also have, whether it's root position, first inversion or second inversion. And so, chord A, we've got to... Don't just look at the um, answers, work out the answer first and then check off the correct option. Don't be sidetracked by lots of options. Let's just get straight to it and find the correct answer for ourselves and then we can easily just choose the right option. So here we have a C sharp, an A and a C sharp again. So we've only got part of the chord However, I think that's enough to tell us that we're in chord four because actually we have some more information here because at this is hanging on because this note is still part of this chord and so we can tell that we've got an E as well and that clarifies because, you know, it could have been a chord two with just A and C but as that minim is carrying on this note is still part of that chord and so we have a a c e c sharp of course but your key signature will deal with that so we know that it's a chord four however what is the bass note and the bass note is the c sharp 
So the middle of the chord is the first inversion and so it's a 4B. And so chord A we can now say with confidence is 4B. We could have thought it was a 2C until we remember that this note is part as this harmony is carrying on. Now we have chord B. Now here we just got all of these notes all together. There's nothing carrying over in the rhythm. And so we have, let's think what we've got here. We've got a G, a B, E, G. Of course it's sharp, G sharp, but that's fine. So that's a chord one. And the root note is the G sharp, which is the first inversion. So it's a one B. And so we can now easily do that. And then chord C are these notes here. We have a B, a D sharp and an F sharp, which is chord five. And the B is in the bass and so it's a chord five A. So that's that one completed. Let's press on. So now we're in the key of B flat major. So let's map out. So we know that we've B flat major because we've got a key signature of two flats and there are no raised sevenths to tell us we're in a minor key. So let's just write our options. We're choosing for chords one, two, four and five. And if we're in B flat major, chord one is B flat, then C. D, we're missing E and F. Build our triads, C, E, G, E, G, B, F, A, C. And we need to also show whether it's root position, first inversion, second inversion, indicating precisely which note is the lowest in the bass. And so chord A, we need to describe this. So we have an F, a B flat, D, F. That's a chord one. And the lowest note is F, so that's a 1C. So we can choose chord A is 1C. Now chord B, this is the harmony note. That's not a harmony note. That's a passing note, just passing through in step to the next harmony note. We can tell it's just going in step and we'll see that it's got no place in this chord. We have a G. E flat, B flat, and so that's going to be a chord four. And we can see that C has got no place in that, that's just passing through by step, just a little bit of melodic decoration moving us to the next chord. And so here, chord four, the G is in the bass, and so we can say that it's a four B. So for B, we can say four B. And then our final chord C here, we have an F, an A, and a C. That's a chord five. And as the F is the lowest note, the bass note, we can say it's a five A. And so we can choose that option. And so we move over the page now, and perhaps this is a good opportunity to try some alone. So just have a go at these, and I do suggest you have a go, no matter if you get them wrong, just have a go and let's see what happens. It's always better to learn that way and we can check through together. So the first job is to find your key. Is it major? Is it minor? Describe the chords and then, only then, as the final thing, do you tick off the correct option. If you find that your chords aren't making sense, it's probable that you've got the wrong key. So I'm hoping that you've had a go of these. So now let's try these together and check through the answers. So what key are we in? We could be in B flat major. However, these F sharps tell us otherwise. This is our raised seventh. That's our clue. So that is our clue. That we are in G minor. So we are in G minus. That's the first job. We can't do anything until we know what key we're in. So if you tried to do this in B flat major, it wouldn't make sense. And you'd soon realise you'd got the wrong key. So let's write down our options. We choose between chords 1, 2, 4 and 5. 
G is the first degree of the scale, A, we miss B, C, D, G, B, D, A, C, E, C, E, G, D, F, A, and of course, the seventh degree is raised, so that's an F sharp, the key signature will deal with all of the flats. And we need to show whether it's root position, first inversion, second inversion. So let's look at chord A. We have B flat D, G B flat D, that's a chord one. And as the B flat is the lowest note in the chord, we'd say it was a one B. So we can choose one B there. Now here, here's chord B. There's our clue that we're in chord five, which shows the raised seventh in the middle of the chord. Here we have D, F sharp, A, D. So yep, yeah, that's chord five. And the D is in the bass. And so it's a root position chord. So that's a five A. So here's five A for chord B. And then chord C, we have a, a C, an E, an A, a C. So that's chord two. And the lowest note of the chord at the base is C, which is the first inversion, and so it's a two B. There we go, let's press on to D. So again, nice little piece of keyboard music by Clementi here. So what key are we in here? Let's think. So we've got a key signature of E flat major, B flats, E flats, A flats. No accidentals to tell us we're otherwise. So that looks like we are in E flat major. Let's just write our options. Chords one, two, four, five. E, F, A, B. Of course it's flat, but your key signature will do the work for you there. E, G, B, F, A, C, A, C, E, B, D, F. And root position, first inversion, second inversion. Now, there's one thing that could throw you here, the bottom part is also in the treble as well. We've got two trebles, so it won't make any sense at all if you're reading that as bass clef, just presuming it's bass clef. So just uh, watch out for that little sneaky device there. So A. So we have a D, F and a B. And so that will give us chord five. And because the lowest note is a D, it's a five B. So we can say that that's a five B for chord A. Now chord B is here. We have a C, an F and an A. And that's chord two. And the bass note, the lowest note at the base of the chord the bottom of the chord is um, a C, and so that's a second inversion, that's 2C, so we can choose that. And then our final chord for this exercise is we have a B, E, G, B, B flats of course, so that gives us a chord 1, and because the B flat is in the bass, it's a second inversion, it's a chord 1C. So that's that one. And we get one more example for this exercise 9. And we finish with a Bach piece. J.S. Bach wrote absolutely hundreds and hundreds of chorales, sort of German hymn tunes, to such four-part harmony as this. He is known as the absolute master of harmony. It's fitting to finish this exercise with a little bit of bark, I think. So we need to discuss which key we're in. Now, is it D major? Or is it B by? Now, we have the key signature for either, but a big clue 
is here, that's our raised seventh. There's no other way of explaining that accidental other than a raised seventh. If that's if A sharp is the seventh, then B is the eighth, and B minor shares the same key signature as D major, so that makes perfect sense. And so we're in B minor. And then we have chords one, two, four, and five. So B, C, Miss D, then we have E, F. Build our triads. And we need to also explain whether it's root position, first inversion, second inversion. And now we've got everything we need to properly and fully describe these chords. So chord A, we have a G. Now the reason there's a stem going down and up is that that's representing it's the bass note and the tenor note. It's giving the two parts of merged and sharing the note. So we have a G, a B and an E, which gives us a chord four. And G is the bass note, so we can say it's a 4B. So that's that one. And then here we have an F sharp. This is an A sharp, still remember the accidental still carries. That is still an A sharp, so that's our clue because we need the A sharp in the middle of our chord five. That's our raised seventh. And so we have F sharp, A sharp, F sharp, C sharp, so that's chord five, yep, we're definitely in chord five. And then because the lowest note is F sharp, it's a five A, so that's that one. And then our final chord here, we have D, B, F, D, that's a chord one all the notes of chord one, B, D, F. And because the D is the lowest note in the bass, it's the first inversion, it's a one B. So there's our one B. And that's that exercise finished. I hope this is helpful to your studies. Please do like and subscribe to stay updated. If you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee and for advert free lessons, you can become a patron. Do visit my website where you'll find many resources available to help you. Visit SharonBill.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.